Neil deGrasse Tyson is a world-renowned astrophysicist and director of the Hayden Planetarium here in New York City. He has a knack for making complex science understandable, and he is back at it as host and executive science editor of the series Cosmos, Possible Worlds. Neil, good morning. We always love talking with you. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. I'll take any day to talk about the universe. <laughs> and that's what I, I want to start with, because, I mean, you're an astrophysicist talking about the universe, it, it, and Cosmos is kind of like the magic school bus for adults. I mean, how are you able to explain science in a way that we all want to listen to? Well, the different media by which people attempt this, their YouTube videos and podcasts and books, Cosmos is a special collaboration of visual artists, of set designers, of, of musicians, of, of cinematographers. Um, it's co-written by Anne Druyan, who's Carl Sagan's widow, but she's the secret sauce that's been in all three cosmoses from 1980, 2014, and this one. And she brings science to a point where you can feel it and be compelled to act on the power that science gives civilization to save us from ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, uh, Neil, we've been talking about uh, the wildfires out west, some of this natural phenomenon that's been happening. NASA released those pictures of, of smoke that can be seen like a million miles away in, from space. Uh, are, are we worried at all that fires could possibly affect the space station? Yeah, no, I mean, space station is hundreds of miles up. So uh, what's interesting about the space era is that we can now see what we do to the earth from a whole other perspective. And so you think it's just happening to you in one, your one little spot. I, we're here on the East Coast. I see some of the haze from those fires that's made it east to above our skies because I pay attention to the night sky mm -hmm. every night. And so you find out that things like this have global consequences and they're not just local. And it's... Uh, <laughs> What we want to be able to do is, at least in Cosmos, what we do is we could say every episode, we're all going to die, we're all going to but <laughs> we don't because you want to always have a thread of hope mm. that will allow you to say we have these challenges, but there are pathways to solve them, provided we have enlightened governance, enlightened electorate, and people participate in creating the future that we all want to have. Hmm. And Neil, I, I've gotten a chance to pick your brain before about uh, whether or not there's life on other planets. And I was excited to hear this report that ast astronomers believe they have found signs of life in the Venus atmosphere. So what, what do you take on that? Yeah. <laughs> so it depends on what level of media outlets you, you access. So... <laughs> depending on how much filtering you do, let's say life found on Venus. That's not what they found. What they found was a biosignature. So it's like the next best thing maybe, hmm. all right? So there's a molecule, it's called phosphine, which we only really know how to make in the metabolism of life. Hmm. And we don't know, in, and by the way, it's not on Venus's surface. Venus is 900 degrees, far, you, you know, you no know life on the surface. But as you <laughs> ascend in the atmosphere, the temperatures get cooler, the the pressures lighten up, and you can make molecules that are familiar to us and into life as we know it. So when you're looking for biomarkers, it's tantalizing and forces you to ask, what else is going on there? Could there be actual life? So there's so there's little men floating in the atmosphere, you're saying? <laughs> yeah. no, I don't think that's what he's saying. <laughs> that's exactly what I just said. <laughs> I <think> so. <laughs> Neil, thank you so much. We always love chatting with you. Excellent, excellent. Anytime. And you can catch the broadcast debut of Cosmos Possible Worlds Tuesday night on Fox.